Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So uh, this afternoon, I got a text from a friend of mine who's a funny friend who works at a funny, peaceful company called Palantir, which basically read, uh, hey, I know you're into AI stuff. You should look at the Palantir YouTube channel around 1 p.m. today. And uh, what I saw was really pretty insane. And uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Alex Karp delivering again on more insane dystopian software we didn't know that the world really even needed so what palantir released is uh is basically chat gpt tied to their um mission orchestration platform and uh it's like their own thing so there's more data security um thankfully and there's a bit more control wrapped around it but um, given, you know, the, the recent discourse of AI safety and uh, ethics of AI, this is just like a wild thing to, to be doing, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, they released a whole video on how it works and why they think this is great for dealing with, um, as they put it, disaster relief, which if you know anything about private military contractors, um, that's what all of them lead with. Because obviously the only reason you would need to hire a private military contractor would be for uh, natural disaster relief. So we're going to get into that today. Um, it's really dystopian. Um, I, it's funny just because I can't believe this actually exists. And let's get into it. So before we get to the creme de la creme of this video, I want to show you a quick clip of Alex Karp, the CEO of Palantir, about two months ago at a summit in The Hague, Netherlands, called Reasonable AI, where he's talking with this guy as to some of the ethical and core motivations of why Palantir works on these kinds of AI. Um, this theme of this conference is responsible AI, so I'd like to get on to kind of ethics and values which you have mentioned. I mean, I guess to massively oversimplify, in uh, America, particularly after 9-11, there was a theory that the ends justify the means that the national security... Not our everything. theory. I know. Yeah. Uh, we'll come to that. Uh, in Europe, I think it, there's a, clearly an argument that individual rights are in some respects more important than national security. So which is the bigger problem, big terror or big yeah, brother? Yeah, we, so can yeah, you reconcile yeah. these our, two? Our, well, I give, it's always interesting to tell people they, things that they will, don't believe, probably justify, we will never believe, but are true. A lot of the reason why my company succeeded was in the beginning, post 9-11, everyone was like, oh, build, find terrorists, we don't care how. Most of our investors are like, find terrorists, we don't care how. And one of, you make lots of mistakes when you do things, and I may have made a lot of mistakes. One of the best decisions I ever made was reflecting upon Hegel. We can have a dialectic. We're going to find terrorists and protect data protection. And why is that important? And by the way, we hadn't even bothered selling our product to Europe, which is, you may, you may not know it, but almost every European country in some form or another uses our CT product. So I'm not exactly sure that that inspired a lot of confidence in the uh, the ethical grounds of Palantir, but uh, to say it's a mistake is in a similar way of saying that it's a mistake to use um, Midjourney to prompt a comically evil early 2000s photo of Palantir executives in front of a fleet of Predator and Reaper drones they intend to use to fight the war on terror. But anyway, let's get into the actual demo of the LLM war LLM, whatever they want to call it, um, that is hilariously evil and pretty interesting. AIP unleashes the power of large language models and cutting edge AI for defense and military organizations. Okay, so that sounds, you know, pretty reasonable, right? Nothing that evil. It's all for uh, good military applications. AIP connects highly sensitive and classified intelligence data to create a real-time representation of your environment. Second, AIP's security features let you define what LLMs and AI can and cannot see and what they can and cannot do with safe AI and handoff functions. Third, AIP brings industry-leading guardrails to control, govern, and trust in the AI. As operators and AI take action in platform, AIP generates a secure digital record of operations. These capabilities are crucial for mitigating significant legal, regulatory, and ethical risks. Because, you know, we wouldn't want any of those. No uh, unethical, potential legal risks. None of those. We start with a military operator responsible for monitoring activity within Eastern Europe. They've just received an alert that military equipment is amassed in a field 30 kilometers from friendly forces. AIP leverages large language models to allow operators to quickly ask questions. Show me more details. 
They ask what enemy units are in the region and leverage AI to build out a likely unit formation. What enemy military unit is in the region? Our operator requests additional imagery to build a more complete picture of the potential enemy equipment on the ground. Task new imagery for this location at a resolution of one meter or higher. So uh, definitely not good news if you're a targeting analyst or uh, an analyst of any kind, but fortunately your whole job is gonna be done through a chat window now. So that's, that's nice. AIP surfaces the option to deploy a nearby drone to collect video. Task the MQ-9 to capture video of this location. The footage confirms a potential threat. The drone footage shows an enemy T-80 main battle tank. Generate three courses of action to target this enemy equipment. The operator uses AIP to generate three possible courses of action to target this enemy equipment. So you've got to love that they, they literally reference uh, an actual MQ-9 Reaper drone and their fictitious enemy is Russia and they've already said that they're probably using this in Ukraine, which is kind of interesting. Next, they use AIP to automatically send these options up the chain of command. Send these three options to my commander for review. Let's look under the hood. As our operator poses questions, the LLM is traversing a data foundation of real-time information integrated from across public and classified sources. Data is automatically tagged and protected by classification markings. So it seems simple enough, right? But what's happening here is we're now relying on an LLM to broker and read all the communication from someone who's, uh, who's telling someone on the ground to kill someone, and then the person on the ground who's saying whether or not they actually want to kill these people. So yeah, that could, that could be a bad idea. That could go wrong in some ways. Our commander must now assess the three possible courses of action generated by AIP to neutralize the buildup of enemy equipment. The system highlights key information for each course of action to assist decision making, such as the time required and status of supplies. Our commander selects a course of action. Approve course of action three. First, the commander uses AIP to assess the battlefield. Analyze the battlefield considering a striker vehicle and a platoon sized unit. So now, regardless of what the commander thinks, we're going to let ChatGPT figure out what the next best idea is. An automated terrain analysis model processes all existing geospatial intelligence to understand unit maneuverability. From here, AIP suggests the optimal route based on the unit's composition and the traversability of the terrain. Generate a route from Team Omega to the enemy equipment. Then, our commander validates the unit's supply of the munition needed to engage the enemy equipment. How many Javelin missiles does Team Omega have? Nice, we have a Javelin. Now, uh, now where do we use it? Targets are paired and ready to execute. Our commander instructs AIP to stand by before sending orders. Finally, our commander uses AIP to summarize and then submit the operational plan for the elected course of action. Summarize the operational plan. Submit. And just like that, in the same way that some of us use the uh, predictive text in Gmail to send an email we think our boss will find intelligible and not offensive, and, you know, didn't re really read it before we sent it, you just did the same thing with ChatGPT to uh, tell someone in the military to blow something up with a javelin. Uh, job well done, and a good day to be a targeting analyst in the military. But wait, there's one more brilliant feature that uh, we have to include before we move on, which is, uh, well, you'll still see what it is. A detailed activity monitor captures all prompts, responses, and decisions, seamlessly mapping AI-driven actions back to the data that powered them. This was imperative for the safe and ethical use of LLMs and AI for our operation. And that, folks, is how we're going to use an LLM to ethically and legally uh, garble a bunch of information from half-baked targeting analysts and uh, use it to kill people, which, what could go wrong, right? We even have a feature that records everything so we can record all the war crimes we commit by accident, but I'm sure it's auditable and maybe in a blockchain or something. So um, I saw this and honestly, I couldn't believe that this is like a publicly available demo that they're like, okay, just having on the internet. But um, it's interesting nonetheless, because it shows us how wild and terrifying things can get, yeah, even with the current goofiness going around with, with AI safety. So like we're worried, we're worried that AI and, you know, chat GPT is going to offend someone, but, uh, but this is apparently totally fine. 
you know, what could go wrong? Literally, what could go wrong? And if it does go wrong, we have a little violation prompt that'll tell us when we commit war crimes. Um, so on an ending note, folks, um, this is very cool te technologically, but I, I think we, it should prompt pause because if we think a little bit and we go back a few short years um, to the Obama administration, we can remember there was a time when we thought it would be a great idea with our data lake of uh, information on Al-Qaeda people and people we thought disliked America while we listened to their cell phones, we thought it'd be a great idea to apply a little uh, machine learning model, or Barack Obama did and his uh, and the CIA did, to uh, understand who we should hit with the drone next because we were doing so many drone hits, we just we didn't have enough drones to go around. And fortunately, uh, a journalist at The Intercept came up with some of these documents and said, you know, maybe maybe we're killing the wrong people. And fortunately, in time, um, we undid the things that made this possible. And we and They closed the project down. But the terrifying thing is um, the people in the federal government who were supposed to be really looking at this to make sure it was okay, they made a bunch of laws that made it way easier to say what a target was and say what someone who should be targeted was. And yeah, so this has been sort of a, a jovial somber tone for this video i know it's a little different for this channel but what i, what I think is important to think about here is um for when the government says it wants ai safety and it wants it that way so no one gets offended remember that years ago um before we even knew this was going on and you know for all we know this is probably already being used so it's probably already too late but remember that the, that same government uh removed a bunch of steps that prevented them from basically killing innocent people so it's not AGI, it's not Skynet, but it's um, pretty close, and they named the program that was uh, randomly deciding to pick drone targets in 2015, uh, they named it Skynet. So as long as Palantir doesn't name any part of this tool Skynet or um, you know an evil name that isn't offensive to anyone in Congress, uh, now that they all have uh, their own free copy of ChatGPT, maybe they can roleplay in the same way, because I'm sure ChatGPT has heard of this, right? If, if ChatGPT hasn't heard of this, we're all doomed. So, as always, everyone, um, I hope you learned something. I hope you have uh, something deeper to think about tonight. And, as always, uh, we'll see you next time.